Hello there and welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie. Coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Tonight is episode 302. Let's see. The weather here in Atlanta, it's 62 degrees and raining. Oh my goodness. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I want to give a special shout out to my niece, Isabella. Today is her sixth birthday. Happy birthday, Isabella. We love you so much. I hope you're having an amazing day. All right, so tonight I've got some amazing projects for you. We've got a extra big gift box slash gift bag. Um, this uses a full sheet of cardstock. And then we've got a fun fold here that is a gift card holder. So really quick and easy fun fold, um, super fun projects tonight. And I, we're using the, what's the name of the designer series paper hold on? The A Walk in the Forest Designer Series paper, and I want to give this paper a shout out because $3 from, the, from every single purchase of this in the U.S. goes towards Toys for Tots. So this is a really good feel-good paper to purchase. It's $12.50. You get 12 sheets, two each of six double-sided designs, and they go to a great cause. So we're using that Designer Series paper tonight. We're gonna do a couple of housekeeping items, then we'll jump into tonight's projects. But first, Brian, are you ready for your cameo? <laughs> um, if you have a question for me tonight, please put a cue in front of that question. That will make it into my cue. We will save all of the Q&A for the end of tonight's live streams so that I can focus on demonstrating tonight's projects for you. It helps our replay watchers as well. Um, and then I will stay on until I answer all of your questions. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. I just ask that you use my current host code on orders under $150, and the easiest way to do that, is it saying no sound? I'm hoping there is sound. I see one person saying no sound. Um, if someone will just let me know in the chat that you can hear me, otherwise we're gonna start all over again. Um, so when you shop with me, you want to use my magic shopping link, the paperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code to your order. Now, if your order is $150 or more, you're going to want to remove the host code so you earn stamp and rewards, but you will still earn pixie perks from me on those orders. I'm waiting for a comment to say the sound is good. Do you see one yet? All right, good. Okay, good. Um, all right, so... We have an amazing join special. I'm always skittish with my mic. Those of you that have been with me for a while, I seem to have mic problems. <laughs> we have an amazing join special to celebrate Stampin' Up's 35th anniversary. They were founded in 1988. So this year they're celebrating 35 years. You have two options to join the Stampin' Up family. One is 35% off the $99 starter kit price, and one is 35% more in product. Uh, so you can pay $64.35 to choose 90, or sorry, I always get that messed up. $64.35 and select up to $125 in product, or you can pay $99 and select up to $168.75. So that's incredible. We do also have a free shipping going on today. Today is the last day free shipping on orders of $75 or more. But the starter kit, I'm pointing the wrong way. <laughs> the starter kit is the best deal of the bunch because it also ships for free. And that starter kit special is available through October 31st. I'd love to welcome you to the Stampin' Up! family and my team of Pixies. Let's see. I also have announced my Pixie patron, my YouTube channel members. I know Pat Rowell, you just joined right when the live stream uh, started. So thank you so much for joining. This it means nothing changes with the channel, but I'm giving some additional perks to those who choose to be a channel member. It's $4.99 per month. You're going to get a members only live stream, which our first one is going to be next Thursday, October 19th at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. That will just be for members only. I will still be live every Wednesday, so nothing changes for that. But it's an additional way for you to support the channel. Behind the scenes, photos, polls, a shout out in the credits at the end of the live stream and priority replies to your comments. So just throwing that out there as well. All right. So here is a sneak peek of... Um, our projects for tonight, again, this is a fun fold. 
holds a gift card and that features designer series paper and showing both sides of it. I love that. And then this is a great size little gift bag. It's got cardstock as the base, so it's a really sturdy gift bag. And we are popping it, making it pop with some beautiful designer series paper. I just have a Velcro closure. You could use um, a magnet as well. With magnets, I would recommend that you hide the magnet underneath the designer series paper for two reasons. One, for safety reasons, if you've got little ones around. And two, that will make sure that those magnets don't separate. Sometimes I've noticed, especially with a style like this, where the cardstock is kind of pulling and naturally wants to open, you're gonna want those magnets behind designer series paper, otherwise those glue dots that you use are just gonna release them when you don't want them to. So. Those are tonight's projects. I do have show and tell from Nolan tonight, actually, and Lily too. She brought something at the last minute. So for those of you that are new here, I just try to share a quick show and tell with my kiddos that can be part of the show. Lily is our fifth grader and she and Nolan were doing a coloring contest the other day. They've been home on fall break. They go back to school tomorrow. <laughs> I think everybody is ready for them to go back to school, including Lily and Nolan. It's only so fun to hang out with your mom while she's working all day. Um, so this is Stitch and she said King Stitch and then these are both tiny stitches. This is a... Oh, I totally forgot the fruit, dragon fruit. Um, so she had some fun and she kind of, they're not teaching cursive, but she likes to write her name in cursive. So that's from Lily. And then Nolan again is a huge platform. <laughs> I may have to hold it up at some point when I've got the front facing camera, but he's got a lot going on on this one. So it is sort of like a double decker. This is actually a raised platform here. I'll flip it around really quickly, but he's got people protecting money apparently. And there's some tools and a toolbox. And this guy has a hammer, he said, or a scythe. Do you pronounce it scythe or scythe? You know the scythe. scythe. Okay. He pronounced it right. I'm impressed. Anyways, this guy's holding, it looks like a Coke can. <laughs> so he was working on this. He had a little bit more time on his hands with fall break. Um, but yeah, he's had a lot of fun doing that. So I may hold it up at some point so you can see the side view. <laughs> My show and tell may need to be two camera views. You got it? All right, why don't we jump into tonight's projects? We are going to start with, let's do the gift bag. I'm, Cause I've got my, uh, that's what's on top of the pile. So I do have a template for you. Um, this is cherry cobbler cardstock. And before I jump into that, let me do a quick shout out of the products we're using today. All right, so in tonight's projects, we are using the Berry Cute stamp set. And technically the Berry Cute Bundle, because on the Fun Fold card I'm going to use the Berry Cute Punch. Then I've got two die sets that I brought into play tonight. The Stylish Shapes dies, which you'll see a few missing because it's the ones we're using tonight. And the Merriest Trees dies. Now if you wanted the bundle for that, there's the Merriest Trees stamp set as well. What I love about this designer series paper, the A Walk in a Forest paper, is that it works with the... the very cute punch. It works with the Marius Trees dies. So let me show you, um, I'll flip through the pages of that designer series paper. Again, this is the one that's the product give back for Toys for Tots here in the US, $3 from the purchase of each package. So this is where, this is the paper that we're gonna die cut a tree and then punch the bear. I love how a Stampin' Up! gives us designer series papers that we can use multiple tools with as well. So. All right, and then we're gonna use Festive Pearls. I seem to be grabbing those a lot lately because they're so great for holiday projects and Cherry Cobbler ink. Alrighty, so we are gonna start with a full sheet of cardstock here in the US that is eight and a half by 11. Now I know those of you that are in Europe that use, it's A4, right? Mm -hmm. That use A4, I think it's eight and a quarter uh, so you may have to tweak a little bit um, the shorter side of your cardstock to get this to work, um, but it's pretty easy to do. So I'll give, give a shout out for that if you're in Europe using A4. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my Simply Scored and we're gonna keep this cardstock in landscape. Uh, so along the 11 inch side, perfect. So they can do the 11 inch, so I'll just trim down to 11, yeah. 
Brian's double checking the A4 dimensions for me, thank you. All right, so along the 11 inch side, we're gonna go ahead and score this at three and a quarter, five and a quarter, eight and a half, and 10 and a half. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate clockwise and we're gonna score this at two inches and six and a half. So if you are using A4, it's just two inches from either side. So your center section is gonna be, um, instead of four and a half, it'll be four and a quarter. So you just wanna keep that in mind when you cut your designer series paper, but you could just do two inches from either side. That would work to adapt this if you've got A4, okay? So I'm gonna repeat those one more time for the replay watchers. I will have project sheets linked in the description I've got the pictures taken and everything, so hopefully um, early in the morning tomorrow you'll find that link in the in the video description. So three and a quarter, five and a quarter, eight and a half, ten and a half. I'm turning it uh, clockwise, two inches and six and a half, or two inches from each side. Okay. Next, I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish on the score lines, and then I will bring in. The template. Great questions, everybody. I will answer those during the QA. Thank you for putting a Q there. And I was laughing at the comment about the festive pearls using up all the red ones. Same, all of my red ones are gone. <laughs> so I need to get myself a new pack. All right, so here is our template. And I like to keep the half inch sort of tab section on the right side, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of focus on the bottom here. And then we'll come in and um, focus on the top as well. All right, so I'm gonna, I like to flip it this way, but I'm just gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at that first horizontal score line, and I am cutting just right up the center. Bubba G's in the house. <laughs> Brian's just shaking his head at me. So like so, I've cut up all of those vertical score lines along the bottom and I'm gonna remove this lower right corner and also just slightly miter cut there. Just giving that a little bit of an angled cut, okay? Now on the top, we are actually just keeping this far left section and the rest of it we're gonna remove and I'm actually gonna use the paper trimmer for that. Um, you can use your snips as well, but that's a long journey for your paper snips. So we're already going to bring in the paper trimmer to trim off our little tabs here. So just do whatever your preference is. I'm doing, just going to go ahead and this is the section that we're keeping. So I'm going to cut right up that vertical score line just adjacent to it, stopping at that first horizontal score line. So we're at least releasing that. And then we're going to cut away this whole section. So I'll bring the template back in a second. Let's make room for the paper trimmer. All right, so I know it's a little bit hard to tell. Just make sure you're keeping that half inch tab here on the right. These are our bottom tabs here. So I'm gonna turn it and fold the big sections out of the way. And I just wanna trim off 3 eighths of an inch from the tabs. I'm gonna fold this down so I've got that long flat edge and I'm just lining up that right edge to 3 eighths of an inch. That just makes sure that these tabs don't have any overlap on the bottom. It's not the end of the world, but it's just a preference of mine. So removing those, just little three, three eighths of an inch sections. And then along the top here, I'm actually going to line up, and actually the best way to do this is to line up, or sorry, to fold back the tab that we wanna keep, if you remember from the template. I'm keeping that, but I'm cutting the rest of this. So I'm just lining up the score line right on the cutting groove there, and I'm gonna bring my paper trimmer, trimmer down to three and a quarter just because that's where I want that cutting to start and then cut. So that removes all of that 
what we're left with, we got that straight cut there. It went really fast because we used the paper trimmer and then we've got our little tab left, okay? All right, so um, bringing in the template again just so you can see that, like so. Got a couple more things to do. On this side tab, we're gonna come in and do a quick miter cut here on this top edge. We're also gonna miter cut these smaller tabs, the ones that we just trimmed the uh, 3 eighths of an inch away from. So I'm gonna come in and miter cut those. I like to fold the larger pieces out of the way. There we go, like that, okay? So the last thing, we, now this template's shrunken a little bit because it is a full sheet of eight and a half by 11. So you'll see that it doesn't quite line up there. And we're gonna round the top two corners here. So I like to use the detailed trio punch. Unfortunately, it's retired, but I'm sure you've got a corner rounder punch in your stash. So I'm gonna go ahead and round those corners. Love all the shout outs for my brother Greg for episode 300. Don't worry, Brian, your time is coming. <laughs> he keeps saying episode 400. We're not gonna make you guys wait that long. All right, so now it's time to put our designer series paper while we're here. It's a lot easier before you put it together. So those measurements are We've got two pieces vertical that are four and a quarter by three. Okay, so two pieces if you have a, a directional pattern, you want those to be in, I said vertical, vertical or portrait. Then I've got two pieces that measure four and a quarter by one and three quarters. Okay, again, those are in portrait. And I actually do a four and a quarter inch strip and then cut, and if you wanted all these patterns to go together, which it really won't matter because it is four sides of a box, um, nobody will notice, but if you wanted to do that, you would just cut three, one and three quarters, three, one and three quarters, okay? And then from that four and a quarter inch strip, if your pattern is not directional, you can still get this piece out of that four and a quarter by 12 inch strip, you have a little bit of extra. But this one measures one and three quarters by three. So if you had directional, you'd want that to be in landscape. So that's the only different direction there. But as you'll see, we need to round the corners on this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you do wanna pay attention if you have a directional pattern, this piece technically in this orientation, you're gonna adhere it upside down and you want to round the bottom corners gonna look like the top, but the bottom quarters of the pattern is what you're gonna round. That's just so when you close the lid, your pattern's going in the right orientation or right direction, okay? So that's gonna go right there. Now we can take our adhesive of choice and adhere these pieces down. So I'm gonna start with the flap. Let's see. Whoops. Love the back side of this pattern too. There we go, I'll start with that one. And then I always like to do this sort of in landscape. So we're just gonna start at the bottom and work our way up. I do find it helps to kind of dry fit all the pieces and you know exactly where they're gonna go. Yesterday, believe it or not, the kids and I watched the movie E.T. And I was trying to explain to the kids, I think she's the same age as me, but I was trying to explain that Drew Barrymore 
is the same age as I am. I don't know if that's right. I haven't double checked her, but I'm pretty sure she's around my age or Greg's age. And so they were like, what? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> she was like four, three or four years old in E.T. I could be totally wrong on the age there, but they watched the whole movie and paid attention to the whole thing. I was quite impressed. I thought they were going to get bored because of the out of date. Um, what would you call it? Movie technology. But no, they watched the whole thing and no one's like, I'm going to watch it again tomorrow. But he didn't. <laughs> But so we made some popcorn and we watched it from start to finish. That was quite, it was very nostalgic for me. And I was, it was, I was fun to share that with the kids. However, I did not realize they used some language in that movie, which I was cracking up about. Standards were different back then, weren't they? It's always so relaxing adhering designer series paper. Hey, and if any of you are new here, let us know in the chat. My amazing community will welcome you with open arms. They're awesome. All right, so there's all the, I'm closing my glue like we're not, like we're done with it, but we aren't. But I love how those look with that little bit of the cherry cobbler peeking through. E.T. go home, that's right. Oh, she's 48. Okay, so she's a little older than me. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead, but the movie was from 1982, so that was my frame of reference. I was born in 78, Greg was born in 81, so right around there. Anyways, so I'm gonna fold, I flipped this over, I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the left, using my flat surface here, and we're gonna go ahead and put liquid glue on the side tab. And then I'm gonna fold on the first score line from the right. Again, just keeping everything flat, because the way our measurements are with the score lines, that all lines up and squares up right where we want it to go. All right, so, like so. So again, this is gonna be our back, because that's where the flap is, keeping that in mind, and I'm just my surface here. This is gonna be our front bottom flap. So I like to fold in the side flaps, and because we trimmed off that 3 8 of an inch, you can see that those just meet up right there. They don't overlap. So liquid glue on those guys. And then liquid glue on the front flap, like so. And it doesn't have to be pretty because nobody's gonna see that. So you fold the back flap over and then the front flap. And liquid glue is your friend here because you can slide everything into place, square up those edges and corners. And then, I did marry a younger man. <laughs> and then, oh. <laughs> Well, you were born in 78 too, but about, what, six months after me? Yeah. Am I doing the math right? Seven months. No. Nine months. I can't do the math. I, math for me. Eight months. There we go. <laughs> just call the year. <laughs> just call the year. You were still born in the same year, so. Um, anyway, so I just used, I closed my glue bottle and used that to press the flaps down. Okay, now this is gonna look funny because this is exactly the same um, depth as the depth of the box, okay? So all we're gonna do here is we're gonna pinch on the sides and just let the paper kind of go where it wants to go. We're gonna teach it a little bit who's boss here, but it's gonna kind of form in a nice way on the side. So I take my index fingers, I've got my middle fingers and thumbs on the corners, index fingers here, and then I'm just gonna push in and pinch. Okay, and you'll see that your paper is gonna kind of do what it wants to. If you want that to be kind of a smoother edge there, I just push those in, like so. And then you can just pinch right there at the top. Okay, love the way that looks. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a Velcro dot. I do have these linked on my favorites page. I've updated my favorites page a little bit and added some additional things. I know y'all have been asking about the lotion and the little trash can I have, so I added a few things to that if you haven't checked it out recently. But these Velcro Thin Clear Fasteners are my favorite, and I go through many, many boxes. But they're 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. I would recommend the larger size for this just because of um, the sort of tension on the box flap.
So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the backing off of the clearer side, which is the hook side of these dots. And I'm gonna go ahead and place that right there on the inside of the flap. And pull the backing off the opposite side. And then we're just gonna take our time and make sure this is lined up where we want it. I'm using my stomach as a third hand here. And I'm just gonna close that. Okay, so I'm pressing as much as I can from the outside, but I do like to then separate this and then just press individually on those Velcro dots, like so. Okay, now you can fit all kinds of things in here. Think like a handful of treats for sure. Um, you could even put a, a, a gift in here, maybe like a silk scarf or something. Um, gold coins would go in there. So that is, um, it's a good size box. The finished dimensions on this before we decorate it, we are four and a half inches tall, but remember it tapers. So four and a half, three and a quarter by two, okay? Now if you have something going on here where you don't, you have that designer series paper, designer series paper kind of coming up just a little bit, that just means I didn't get adhesive all the way to the end there. I'm just gonna do one tiny little dot of adhesive to hold that into place. There we go. As it pops up on me again. But we're live, that's how it goes. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and decorate this beautiful box. I've got a couple of pieces that I've already die cut just to save a little bit of time, but we'll do a little bit of stamping. Uh, this is just from our gold foil. This is the stylish shapes dies, and the diameter of this circle is about two and one eighth in diameter. So that's gonna be the base of our decoration here. And then this is just gingerly cut out from the A Walk in the Forest designer series paper. And I just wanted to show you what my piece looks like from doing our project. So, um, look, this is what's left. I just kind of was gingerly cutting in between. A lot of these pieces can either be punched or die cut with, um, again, the... Merriest Trees Dies and the Berry Cute Punch. All right, so I love that this works with multiple things. So I cut out a couple of pieces from A Walk in the Forest. We're just gonna be using the one on here, but let me grab the tree die. So we're gonna die cut that. And then I'm gonna just line this up before we cut it. Got my post-it tape. I always like to use two pieces just to kind of anchor that in place. Let me put that off. Is that the only thing we're die cutting on this? Oh, we're just gonna die cut it now. I was trying to think if there was more die cutting for the box, but there's not, just fussy cutting. All right, let me bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. With my warped plates. You can also stamp this uh, tree as well using the stamp set. I love cutting out of designer series paper. Isn't that so cute? Mm, love that. All right, let me save that post-it tape for later. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. Let me grab my stamps. And cherry cobbler ink. I'm just gonna do these on two. I just have scrap pieces of basic white. So we've got warm wishes, and we're gonna build a little sentiment here. This was inspiration from inside the catalog. I'll show you that page. So warm wishes, and then I really only need to ink up Christmas, but I'm just gonna <laughs> to make it a little bit easier. What you could do is just ink up on the edge just get the word Christmas, because that's the only word that we're gonna use tonight on this project. I'll just do the whole kit and caboodle here. There we go. I'm gonna 
show you my inspiration. I often go to the um, catalogs for inspiration, but that's where I grabbed this cute Christmas wishes over a Christmas tree. I loved taking pieces and parts from two different sentiments. Makes your stamp set stretch further. All right, so paper snips. We're gonna go ahead and do some trim in here. And go this way let's see just trying to get as square as I can around the word wishes like so so we got wishes and then Christmas So now let's go ahead and build this. I'm gonna actually build it here. Let's grab my silicone craft mat. So we've got the circle as the base and then we're gonna put the Christmas tree over top. Actually, let's do this the way I did it on my sample. Just to make sure that I get the tree because there's only limited space. I'm basically trying to build the decoration here from the bottom of the flap to the bottom of the box. So we're gonna go ahead and use liquid glue on the circle first. I'm not using any dimensionals on this because um, I feel like the box with the lid has quite a bit of dimension, but you certainly could. So I'm just centering that again between the bottom of the flap and the end of the designer series paper. That's kind of where my eye is naturally going. Love that Mary Ellen. Her husband loves the lotion. That is a really good piece of feedback from a hubby, right? All right, so then liquid glue on the tree. I'm just kind of keeping it to the middle because the top of the tree is going to hang off the circle. We'll go ahead and center that. Just didn't want the top of the tree to go above the bottom of the flap there. Now you've got foil here, so it's going to take a little bit for that liquid glue to adhere. That tends to slip and slide around a little bit more on the foil. There we go. And then Christmas wishes. Just putting liquid glue to the center of that because the edges are gonna hang off a little bit. So a little bit cattywampus, I thought was kind of fun. And then wishes, again, kind of sticking just to the center here. Like that. I don't want to cover up the Christmas tree too much. This tree is a little bit smaller than the inspiration in the catalog. So I wanted you to be able to tell there was still a Christmas tree there. So the finishing touch is a trio of our festive pearls. Now the, the trick is going to be, can I find these products again when we do the fun fold card? <laughs> All right, so I like to use the putty end of our take your pick tool. I just find it gives me a lot more control about where I'm putting the uh, adhesive backed embellishment. So one there, one there, and one there. So there we have our full sheet gift bag featuring the A Walk in a Forest d designer series paper, which is our product give back. And I just put those embellishments where I'm going to forget where I put them. <laughs> so there we go. And again, great size gift box. Fill it with lots of treats or a gift. You could probably put, I don't know, a votive candle or two there in the bottom. Socks would be a great suggestion. Yeah, love that. So there is tonight's version and then the sample. All right, so I'll bring those back out towards the end so we can take another look at it. Let's go ahead and move into our fun fold, which is a gift card holder, like so. All right, so we are going to start with 
a sheet of designer series paper that measures five and a quarter by 12. So you can get two of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12 plus, a, uh, let's see, you're gonna have five and a quarter, 10 and a half. You'll have an inch and a half by 12 strip left over from the designer series paper you can use for another project. So I have picked um, the same pattern from the gift bag you do want to make sure that if it is a directional pattern that it's in landscape all right i'm going to bring in my simply scored here and this is super easy we're just going to score at four inches from either side so this is along the 12 inch side so four and four okay easy peasy Next, I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish. I scored on this side of the paper, so that's a little bit of a valley score line. We're going to fold that the opposite way, so turning that into a mountain fold. Like so. Okay. Now, you want to pay attention to the way that you sort of uh, close these flaps. If you had a directional pattern, you want to make sure your pattern is going top to bottom. And the flap here on the right side, we're just going to do a little bit of a fold. So I'm going to take this edge and fold it diagonally to line up with the score line there. Now I like to come, sometimes I have to lift this up just a little bit so I can see the score line, especially on a pattern paper. But I like to go just up to the score line, not right on top of it. That makes sure that there's a little bit of wiggle room for this to close without that edge kind of getting caught on the fold. Okay, so again, we had our five and a quarter by 12. We scored it four inches on either side. When you've got your orientation of your pattern the right way, you just fold this corner down, okay? And it's gonna end up folding like so. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this little corner fold down I'm gonna just go right up to the score line with my liquid glue. Hold on, I'm at the bottom of the bottle. A little bit of centrifugal force. Like that, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and fold that down. Gives you that nice folded edge to create that pocket that the gift card is gonna fit into. And you've got a couple of options here. You could just run tear and tape along the bottom and the side edge. Your pocket would go a little bit deeper. I'm actually just gonna take liquid glue and apply it right where, or just beneath that diagonal piece. So that whole section is glued down like that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and close it. Like so, okay. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do while we have this, I'm gonna grab a five and a quarter by four inch piece of basic white. This is actually where you're gonna write your note or you can write your note. You could also just decorate it and add a white panel to the back of this fun fold card. Let me turn it this way. Let me, I need to correct my measurement on there. This one is actually three and three quarters by five. I'm so used to saying four by five and a quarter, but it's three and three quarters by five. That will, I'll make sure that's correct on the project sheet, okay? You can make that smaller too if you wanted more of a border of the designer series paper, but you still get a pretty peak of it here. This piece is a quarter sheet of cardstock and it measures five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're gonna adhere this whole fun fold piece right down to that base. We'll put the gift card in when we're all done. I'm just gonna let that adhesive kind of um, adhere and sort of dry a little bit. But let's go ahead and decorate the front of this piece. So 
Again, done a little bit of die cutting ahead of time. So this is a gold foil circle and this diameter from Stylus Shapes measures three inches, okay? I also die cut this piece from Pecan Pie and I love this die because it also does the embossing, okay? It embosses and cuts at the same time. Again, that comes from the merriest, merriest trees dies. And then we've got this piece we're gonna die cut and punch from. Put that off to the side here. So I'm gonna grab, this to me looks like a snow globe. <laughs> kind of does a little bit on the card as well. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this die cut from Marius Trees. I'm gonna die cut that out. You know what, let's punch the bear first. So very cute punch gonna come in. It's easier for me to punch the bear now as opposed to when I've die cut this because right now I've got a handle for this cute bear. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line him up. I love when we can punch and die cut shapes out of our designer series paper. So there's our cute little bear. And then we'll go ahead and line up this die. Anchor it with two post-it tape pieces. <laughs> clunk, clunk, clunk. the tree set them free there we go I love that again designer series paper does all the work here of course we're gonna be die cutting one more time I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment warm wishes again I tell you guys sometimes my brain does one thing and my mouth does another although that wasn't a mouth thing that was I just forgot that I was die cutting two things so Warm Wishes and Cherry Cobbler. We're gonna die cut this with the, let me tell you the diameter of this one. This one is about an inch and three quarters in diameter. Just right for Warm Wishes. Get that lined up. And die cut that. got some life left in these post-it tapes so I stick those off to the side now we can go ahead and start to piece this together so look at my sample there we go all right so the we're gonna do the tree first let's do that got our pecan pie tree base just gonna put a, li a little line of glue right along the top of this little basket base and line up our tree over top, like so. Little cattywampus there, there we go. All right, and then we're gonna adhere those two together. Probably should be doing this on the front of the card instead. <laughs> but that's what the silicone craft mat is for. Let's go ahead and transfer that to the card here. There we go. Of 
All right, so. Oh, I forgot to stamp one more thing. We can't forget a scarf. It can't be warm wishes without a scarf. So y'all are gonna have to watch me fussy cut tonight. <laughs> So this little scarf is so cute. Oops, get that inked up. There we go. Made a total mess of my hand here. From the, I think that's from the machine. <laughs> All right, time to fussy cut. I know that there are two camps, those that love to fussy cut and those that are like me. But the trick that I've always learned and have been taught is to turn the cardstock, not your scissors. And that'll just give you, I'm gonna actually trim off that extra piece. That'll give you a little extra control when you get rid of the big pieces that are in your way. I'm, I oftentimes have to say, turn the cardstock, turn the cardstock, not the scissors. And if you're left-handed, I'm sure this is totally different for you. I had originally tied a, um, a gold trim bow around the polar bear's neck, but I just, this uh, scarf is just too darn cute. So there we go. Okay. Now we can start to build this. Let's go ahead and put his little scarf on him. Totally makes the bear. Is that not the cutest? Look at his scarf. <laughs> I love it. And then we're gonna use some dimensionals here. So this guy, we're gonna use kind of a combination of minis and regular. Maybe four big ones, and then I'm gonna cut using these scissors from my customer Kate. I'm just gonna cut dimensional in half here. Cause even the um, full size of the mini dimensionals is a little bit too big for his paw. So I didn't cut all the way through that. Just want, I found that the paw sticks up a little bit. So I'm just gonna stick one right on his paw there. And we'll pop him down here, kind of ground it a little bit. And then pop this one up off here. And then a little trio of festive pearls, which I remembered where I put them. So we're gonna do one, two, and three. Go ahead and beg, borrow, or steal the gift card. We're gonna go ahead and pop that in here. Perfectly fits in there, got a space for a note. You could stamp or decorate this panel as well. But there we have our fun fold card using a 12 inch by five and a quarter strip of designer series paper to make a really cute gift card pocket. So there we go. Two different, you can see both of these trees were cut from the same designer series paper. And I just love the way they both turned out. So there are, that's our fun fold for tonight. And our 3D project, our full sheet gift bag. So let me go ahead and get everything teed up for Q and A. Just a quick reminder, if you've got questions, make sure you put a Q in front of your team. Log into your account at stampinup.com and click the little sign in in the upper right corner. Kind of the same for a customer as well. And then you're gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, click on your account and then you can change your address there. 
So underneath your account information, okay? Cindy, I'm, well, I'm on my, I'm past the halfway point. I just uh, celebrated my $700,000 um, sales, career to date sales. I don't know what theme a Julie DiMatteo stamp set might look like. It is something that I'm gonna keep my, my eyes on um, and think about. So I've got some time to do it for sure. Oh, Brian's wisdom on flattening the warped plates worked like a charm, awesome. Have I done a box or a bag for a mini moon pie? No, I have not yet, Cindy. Um, the, mo the closest one is what we did a couple weeks ago with the snickerdoodle cream pie. But I haven't done a moon pie, those are a little bit bigger, but it's on my list. So I know they have them at Walmart, so the next time I go to Walmart, I'll look for those. The autumn paper is out of stock again. Let me check the inventory status report. Let me see if that has changed yet. It is estimated to be restocked the week of October 23rd. Let's see, it's, I mean, made a restock date for that. Let's see. If I join as a demonstrator, can I still order from your website? So Carolyn, when you join as a demonstrator, you actually will order from yourself on the website. That way you will receive the 20% discount on your orders. And that is, in my opinion, the best perk of the bunch is the demonstrator discount. So um, you'll be ordering from yourself um, at stampinup.com, but it'll be through your demonstrator account. And it comes with that amazing discount. Cindy, great question. Um, the Yes, the YouTube channel members can be from any country. You don't have to be based in the US. So yes, you can join the channel from any country, um, but otherwise everything Stampin' Up! related, ordering and team and starter kit and all that needs to be US. But no, the YouTube channel members can be anywhere in the world. Patricia, I think you're referring to my blog posts and I get tons of questions about this, so I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I have not posted to my blog since I lost my dad suddenly and unexpectedly in March. Blogging has just not been a priority with all that has come with losing him and trying to settle his estate. So blogging just kind of went to the bottom of the priority list. I do plan to get back to updating the blog the frequency, however, will likely be only about once per week. The best place to find me is right here on YouTube. So you can see all of my new projects. I'm live every week at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then in the description of the video, I include links to project sheets so you can see the measurements and the template and go recreate the projects yourself. So that's the best place to get all of my projects and content right now. That is the one thing that I've been able to keep up with in co consistently is showing up live here on YouTube. I think we answered this, Judy, but just to repeat, the week of October 23rd. Yeah, I think it was available for about five to six hours before it sold out again. Word travels fast. Um, just, it's difficult for me to do Prize Patrol using the live streaming software that I have. Um, Ecamm Live is what I use. StreamYard is what I used before, and they have a built-in sort of um, giveaway tool. That's, that's part of the reason why I didn't do Prize Patrol. Let's see. Yay! Awesome, Cindy! Always so hard to line the die up on the stamped image or like on this one, the designer series paper. Do you have any tricks as to how to get how to get the die lined up well? I'm tongue tied tonight. So the way that I line it up is I look at multiple places on the die just to see that there is about the same amount of white um, between the pattern on the designer series paper and the inside edge of the die. So if you kind of anchor let's say your index finger on the top, when you kind of get the top lined up where you want it, then you can kind of pivot the rest of the die <clears throat> to make sure you've got the same sort of white outline all the way around that, the die. I just recommend kind of looking in multiple spots to make sure they're all kind of lined up in a similar, in a similar fashion. That's the best tip that I have. Sometimes that's hard to explain, but that's a great question. Yes, Mary, the lotion I use is fragrance free. Yep, no synthetic fragrance, but it does say that it's unscented. So I know that that can mean many things, but it says unscented, no synthetic fragrance, which probably means there might be 
I don't know, I have a very strong nose and um, it's does this, it doesn't have a fragrance. It's unscented, that's the best I can tell you, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an expert on the ingredients. Um, you absolutely could put the saying on the flap, Sandy. That's one of the best things about paper crafting is you can make it your own for sure. What do you think about adding two straps on the back of the gift bag and turning it into a backpack? I think this is such a fun gift bag. That's a great suggestion. That would be so cute. Turn it into a backpack. I love it. I'm, I'm new. Welcome, Angela. And I love your dual card and treat box duo. Does your company make dies to fit your designs on the designer series paper pads? I think what you might be asking, Angela, is maybe the 3D projects that I create, if Stampin' Up! makes dies to create those. Mine are all sort of created from scratch. So no, they don't have specific dies that make my boxes. But that's what my tutorials are for, is to show you how to make the boxes from scratch using cardstock and designer series paper. So hopefully that helps. Lorraine, do I know if there are any demonstrators still around from the beginning? I believe there are. I did see someone in the chat. I think Jill, o Jill Olson is one of the originals. Um, but there's a lot of demonstrators, not a lot, but I know there are some demonstrators from back in 1998, 1988. I just can't think of their names right now. But yes, I do believe there are a few still around, which is amazing. If you join as a demonstrator, what happens to your paper pumpkin subscription? Does it now revert to you or does it stay with the person you originally signed up under? Great question, Anita. So the trick here is that um, as long as your email address for paper pumpkin is the same email address when you sign up uh, as a demonstrator, that Paper Pumpkin subscription will move under you as the demonstrator, which means you also get the demonstrator discount on it. There's always a way to work around that if your email addresses happen to be different between Paper Pumpkin and your demonstrator account, you can just reach out to demonstrator support and they'll fix you right up. But yeah, that's one of the, the good perks of joining as a demonstrator is your Paper Pumpkin account can follow you as the demonstrator and you'll get your demonstrator discount on it. Great question, Laura. Why do you suppose Stampin' Up! hasn't come out with an electric die cutting machine yet? I don't really know the answer to that, but I could guess that it's probably cost prohibitive to do so because um, they are significantly more expensive when you've got the electric parts to it. Um, that would be my guess, but let's see. It's not that much faster. And it's not that much faster, that's true. Especially when the one we have is the... Um, Big Shot Express, and you have to hold the button. <laughs> so really, the only difference, yeah, it, <laughs> it does move very slowly, but the only difference is you're holding a button instead of cranking. Um, but there's a benefit to the electric ones, especially if you're doing a bunch of die cuts over and over again, but they are expensive, so. Um, Zandy, as a demonstrator with your team, what days of the week, times, frequency does your team get together? How Zoom, Facebook, and other benefits team-wise? So um, I'm revamping a little bit of our team events this uh, Stampin' Up! year. So we're going to be doing um, Zoom stamp and shares together so we can get to know each other on camera. Um, I do a weekly email and a monthly email. I call them my weekly roundup, my monthly roundup. Um, we also are going to be um, starting back doing our quarterly uh, card swaps. And I have a team Facebook group as well that is very active and folks share the projects that they're making and ask questions. And I pop in there with um, reminders of things and cool things that I've found. So we have a lot of fun together. They're all across the country. So everything we do is virtually so that nobody misses out. Do you do a meeting too? You hold the stamp and chat, yeah. One more question, no need to apologize. I love the questions. With the 35% off join promo, does this come with the ticket to the virtual onstage event or is that only for just the 35 plus side of the promo? It's for both. So whether you choose 35% off or 35% more, both options come with free registration to the onstage at home event, which is a virtual demonstrators only stamp along event. It's gonna be on November 11th, but it will be recorded if you can't attend that registration comes free, so that's a $77 value. What also comes with that registration is we have a brand new suite called the Be Mine Suite that anybody that's registered for Onstage at Home can purchase 
um, as a perk of being an, a, an attendee for OnStage. So lots of cool stuff. Um, and when you join Stampin' Up, you get a separate email from Stampin' Up with details on how to purchase that suite. It's adorable. I think I'll probably give you a sneak peek next week. I just got it this week. I've been having problems with the tracking link in the emails from Stampin' Up. Link to track shipping doesn't go anywhere, both Apple and laptop. I've got an answer for you on this, Lisa. So that, unfortunately, is a glitch for orders that are shipped via Mail Innovations. For some reason, the tracking link doesn't come through the emails if it's been shipped via Mail Innovations. So it says the track package button, but it's like an unclickable button. So I keep begging Stampin' Up to see if they can do anything to fix that. I hope that a fix will be coming soon, but you're not crazy. It literally is a button, a dead button <laughs> with no link behind it, but it's just the mail innovations. If it's shipped FedEx or UPS, those tracking buttons work. You can always reach out to your demonstrator and they can give you um, the tracking link for that. Just I know it's an extra step to ask for that, but absolutely ask for your tracking link from your demonstrator. Do you receive some code to have demonstrator access? No, Kathy. Um, I have actually been sending you a couple of emails and I'm concerned that my emails might be going to your spam. So um, Stampin' Up! would have sent you an email with uh, two steps to take to log into your demonstrator account. And um, you don't have to have a code. You type in your demonstrator ID and your password um, to get logged in. So. Um, check your spam folder if for some reason you're not getting my email replies, okay? Let's see. So Lydia, to join the YouTube channel, right next to the subscribe button, actually it's directly to, I'm gonna do it, I'm doing it on the wrong side, but on the, to the left of the subscribe button, you'll see a join button and that will walk you through the steps. You do have to have a Google slash YouTube account. That is completely free, but that is how um, YouTube can associate your account with your channel membership. So look for the join button right next to the subscribe button. Alternatively, you can go to the paperpixie.com slash patron, I think is the link. You'll see it in the credits tonight. Uh, but you can also email me, Lydia, and I can give you a link to join. Oh, great. Thank you, Cindy. The new white ribbon with the silver edging is back in stock a week early if any, anyone wants it. You just ordered that Marius Trees. That's great. Yes, Pat, you're supposed to get a one-time paper pumpkin kit. Um, it should be, as far as I know, they're still doing that. I haven't been told otherwise. But yeah, you were supposed to get a past paper pumpkin kit in your new demonstrator welcome box. But let me know if you did not, okay? And I can find out for you. Oh, Susie, you're so sweet. So yeah, you can just go to the join button, which is right to the left of the subscribe button on my channel. Um, or there'll be a link. I'm pretty sure I did the paperpixie.com slash patron, and that will take you to the join link as well. And just follow the steps while you're there. So Michelle, I'm going to be kind of doing a mix to make sure because I've got team members that are um, retired and those that work as well. So trying to do a little bit of a mix of daytime versus evening of events for that. But they'll all be able, all be available via replay because I'm not going to be able to pick a time that works for everybody. But you'll be able to catch replay if you're not able to join us. So, oh, <laughs> Cindy, why not? <laughs> Let's do that. And then we'll jump right into, we'll wrap it up here. So let me come back to demo really quickly. Thank you, Cindy. I'll do it really quickly. All right, you guys, be my Valentine bundle. Bees. These are actually the wings. Um, we got our antenna and four adorable little faces. Here is the Bee Builder Punch. I haven't even labeled it yet, but look at the possibilities. Word bubbles, hearts. You could do butterflies. Uh, but this works with the stamp set. So this is the Be My Valentine bundle. Adorable embellishments. These are called the adhesive backed hearts and flowers. They're epoxy, but really thin. So great for mailing cards. <laughs> I'm doing this really quick. I happened to clean up, so. This isn't too bad for me to do on the fly. All right, so you're going to see both sides of the paper here, front and back. 
I mean, I cannot with this. It's so stinking cute. I'm going to do this rather fast because I want to be cognizant of your time. I will put chapters in the video as well so you can hop around if you like. Look at those bees. Oh. So this is a sneak peek of an upcoming bundle to the January to April 2024 mini catalog. Those who join as a demonstrator now will have the opportunity to purchase this suite. It is a $75 suite collection. The colors in this really quickly are Basic Black, Daffodil Delight, Lemon Lime Twist, Petal Pink, Pool Party, and Sweet Sorbet. And then we've got two more things. This is the ribbon, which is the Sweet Sorbet bordered ribbon. Scrumptious for making bows, because I like the width of it. The width of this is quarter of an inch, but really easy to make bows. We've had a ribbon like this before, but it was wider. And then, I'm going to show you the packaging, but these are the square pillow boxes. How stinking cute are those? I put one together when I did a live box opening for my team. So that is the Be Mine Sweet Collection. How's that? All right, so let me go ahead and move to, we're not, we're done with the Q&A. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's video, you learned a quick tip or two, be sure to make sure you've given this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Hit that bell icon so you receive all notifications of whenever I schedule a video so you don't miss my next video. We will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, episode 303. That will be Wednesday, October 18th. 2023. Thanks again for joining me. Don't forget today is the last day to grab free shipping on orders of $75 or more ends at 1159 p.m. Mountain Time tonight. And the starter kit special 35% off or 35% more in product that goes through October 31st. And I'd love to have you join my team of paper pixies. As always, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. We will see you next Wednesday, and I'm going to give a quick shout out to my YouTube members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget, all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Take good care. We'll see you next week. Bye.